when they were trying to save money, because that's what switching to the Flint water was. They're trying to save money, by the way, because Republican politicians have given huge tax breaks to corporations, wealthy people, and they ran, that, ran up the debt. Now, I don't think they would have tried to save money and gone with the Hudson River in New York City. Uh, with eight, there's eight million people there. It's not, not predominantly black, predominantly white. Uh, I think they use this as a guinea pig because subconsciously or consciously, well, it's a poor black neighborhood, so. It's a poor black neighborhood, and we've already taken away the factories. We've already taken away their pride. Um, we've taken away their voice, their voice, because, like I said, we didn't vote on it. And so they put us in dictatorship and not democracy. And our forefathers fought for us to have privilege to speak, to have dem democracy, to have a democratic way of life. And they took that away. And so under dictatorship, one man decided that we wasn't worth clean water, decided, oh, we don't count. And not only do I say that with confidence and pride, but I say that because in December, of 2014, Governor Rick Snyder said, we wasn't worth, Flint wasn't worth coming to see about it. He said that he didn't know anything about it in 2015, 2016, when we went to court in Washington, D.C. But I know it's a lie, because in February of 2015, myself and about 20 other pastors, we went to Lansing. So don't tell me you didn't know. You didn't, don't tell me you didn't know it was a problem because we told you it was a problem. We took evidence, we took proof, we took papers, we took the people that needed to stand up to verify the problem in Flint. But you wouldn't hear us, you wouldn't listen. So you're saying in 2006, when did he say that he didn't know there was a problem? He said in 2016 in Washington DC in March, when he went to testify, he didn't know it was a problem. But he's a lie because in December of 2014, which is recorded, that it wasn't worth coming to Flint to see what was wrong. In February of 2015, myself and about 20 other pastors went to Lansing to, to, to report the problem. Now, we asked to see him. But he sent his uh, lieutenant governor, he sent Harvey Hester, he sent the DEQ. We all were in the room and we explained and we gave them the, the facts. I th I'm so thankful for Representative Sheldon Neely that arranged the meeting. So don't tell me you didn't know. And then we went back in May or June, and I don't remember, in 2015, and we took Dr. Lore that was a specialist in the lead contamination and the lead poison and what it would do to our children, what it would do to our adults. They did nothing. It costs too much. We can't go back at it this time. Not only they couldn't go back, they, wouldn't, they still didn't put the treatment in the water. When you knew it wasn't being treated, you knew it had TTLMs in the water. There, there was so much that was going on but he did nothing, nothing at all. You know, I think uh, because the mainstream media has, you know, left basically, they, oh, yeah. it's no, they, they've left a while ago. Um, a lot of people's cognitive dissonance has led them to believe, oh, things are getting better in Flint. You see this number that, that they've put forward, 96% of homes are under the normal lead levels, which A, I don't, they haven't sampled nearly <laughs> enough homes. Secondly, uh, what is it? It seems like an arbitrary level to begin with. 15 uh, parts per billion. Where I come from, like, there should be no lead in your water. Can I have a cup, please? And the reason why I come out asking for a cup, because in 2014, the mayor at that time, Dane Wally, went on TV, on national TV, and held up a cup that was supposed to have Flint water and say, hey, it's all right to drink, there's nothing wrong with it. And I am so grateful being part of the Ground Roots 
organizations, uh, Democracy Defense, Caution, uh, CBOC, community-based organized partners, that we continue to cry out and say there is a problem with the water. Don't drink the water. Don't cook with the water. And we had the powers to be those that were in authority. Study lying to the people. So I don't care what they say. I don't care what they say until you can show me and prove me, not by what they say. Like you say, they haven't tested enough homes yet. My seamstress lived right in the heart of the city of Flint, which I had told her, don't drink the water, don't cook with the water. And she believed me. I told her in July, of 2015. I said, Ms. North, go get a kit to get your water tested. And her water tested 1,000 per billion. Jesus. Had it not been for myself warning the community, warning her, everybody, whether I went into a restaurant, where I went to the church, whether I was in the grocery store, I didn't care where I was. I always told people, do not drink the water. Do not cook with the water. My daughter was on a fixed income that had to buy water out of her check, out of her monthly check. She had to buy water. That was in 2015, before they decided that it was emergency to be sore, before they decided it was a problem. Bought water. In August of 2014, Democracy Defense and Caution, we started passing out water. We set up a water emergency relief station where people could pick up water or drop off water. That was in August of 2014. Not a very big group of people, but a group of concerned citizens, concerned about our community, about the health of the community, about those that were uh, getting water from the cemetery because their water had been cut off. For those that, that, that didn't have any water, just a little help. That was before the city decided, or before the governor decided that, oh, we got a problem, which was in October of 2015. A year and a half later, we have a problem. It's lead in the water. And then he wanted to say in October 2015 that we, we need to start from here. No, you can't start from where you messed up at. You got to go back and fix what you broke. And so that's where we're at right now, that it need to be fixed what has been broken. Well, they're saying the water's safe to drink if you have a filter. Uh, call me crazy, but I don't really trust my kid's health getting a filter at the supermarket and putting it in my faucet. I don't know how that definitively prevents all traces of lead. Uh, what do you think you're seeing the numbers, like I've said, 96%, they're, they're going out saying, you know, they sent out these brochures, here's how you drink the water with a, with a, with a filter. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? If you would go back to 2014 and beginning of 2015, uh, when Dane Walding was the mayor. They were supposed to have tested, and I think they tested 75 homes. But the only problem was where they tested the 75 homes were where they had changed the pipes already. <laughs> the type pipes had been changed, and they tested them one time. And in those areas, so the areas that were high in lead, they didn't give that, that uh, reading out. And in July of 2015, Virginia Tech came and we tested 395 homes. And out of the 395 homes, all, all, were high in lead content. Virginia Tech has been back several times since 2015. 
They've been back and they've tested. They just did a test last month, a month before last. And the lid, the, the, the water is still not consumable. The water is still not consumable. That was done by Virginia Tech. I trust them. Trust has to be earned. And the city of Flint and I, I'm grateful that we have a new mayor, Mayor Karen Weaver. But she only can do so much. And so she needs the support of the community. Had it not been for Dr. Uh, mayor, Dr. Karen Weaver, it would never have been unveiled that we had a problem. I got to push back on that, though, because I don't know the mayor. I'm not from Flint. But from what I do know, she, didn't, she wasn't supportive of recalling the governor. Uh, you know, to me, I don't know how you start with this without accountability and new leadership. Uh, from what I know, she did not uh, say anything about that. Well, she was so busy trying to get, and I know from, from working with her, she, she came in in November of 2015 and off Jump Street before she was in office a month, she declared emergency. Well, you have to get the approval of city council, you have to get the approval of county commissioners, and then you have to get the approval of the governor in order to do that. You say recall, we say accountability. Fix what you broke. We, we all have an art against him being able to still make decisions, to make decisions for the city of Flint, in the state of Michigan, because we have a water problem and water crisis here in the city of Flint. In Detroit is something else. In Grand Rapids is something else. And so all over Michigan where he's had a hand. And if you notice the only place or the only cities that have emergency managers are those that are predominantly cities of color. Now, are we the only ones that are having a financial problem? No. I remember when we went to the hearings in August of 2016. I've been a busy lady. We were in August of 2016. Um, the attorneys named off seven other cities that have financial problems that they had not put in, uh, given them an emergency manager. So you're right. It's a color thing.